watching a SpaceX booster land is a joy. And with the help of Starlink, SpaceX has succeeded in making the event more frequent than ever before, often launching multiple rockets every single month. Though launching Falcon 9s has become extremely common, the speed of reusing boosters hasn't really improved much. In 2020, SpaceX did set the record for fastest turnaround, but that was only 3 days faster than the space shuttle, coming in at 51 days. Evidently, this is quite far off from Elon Musk's vision that SpaceX would use rockets in less than 24 hours by 2020. So why does it still take SpaceX so long to reuse a booster? Well, in order to answer this question, we have to first take a look at where exactly the time is spent in the first place, starting with of course the actual refurbishment process. Before any work on the booster actually begins, any excess fuel in the tanks will be drained and in some cases burned. SpaceX has been pretty quiet about how exactly the refurbishment process works, so we'll have to rely on tidbits we got here and there. Hans Koenigsmann, the vice president of SpaceX, revealed that the majority of the work is the engine. Even though the booster is designed to be fully reusable, SpaceX often replaces certain parts like the turbine wheels. This isn't to say that these parts can't be reused. However, reusing them non-negotiably increases the possibility of complications during flight. So, SpaceX has stuck to the good old rule of better safe than sorry. Aside from swapping parts in the engine, SpaceX also has to clean the 9 Merlin turbines, which according to Musk is quite difficult. Moving on from the engines, SpaceX boosters often show signs of minor damage to the heat shield and aero cover from debris and the high temperatures and pressures the booster experiences. Koenigsmann assures us that this is completely normal, but this nonetheless increases the refurbishment time. After this, SpaceX inspects the fuel tanks. However, on occasion, they have found some damage caused by the thermal protection system. SpaceX has revealed that the entire inspection slash processing stage is usually completed within 30 days. Once all of the inspections, repairs, and replacements are done, SpaceX moves on to the testing stage. In this stage, SpaceX will go ahead and complete many of the common rocket tests like the stacked fire test. Again, these tests aren't actually required to have a successful flight, However, this can prevent a more serious disaster during the actual flight. So, as you can see, refurbishing a booster and getting it ready for launch generally takes several weeks, and this is where the bulk of the time between launches is spent. Fortunately though, most of the processes during refurbishment is simply precautionary steps. So, as Falcon 9 continues to prove its reliability, SpaceX will likely be able to cut down on the inspections and replacements they have to complete between flights with minimal additional risk. The refurbishment process isn't the only step between Falcon 9 launches though. Another major hurdle when it comes to reusing a booster is the rest of the rocket. After all, there is no purpose in just launching a booster into space. SpaceX has worked on making as many parts of the rocket reusable as possible, even including the fairings. But there are still major parts that are still not reusable, specifically the second stage of the rocket. SpaceX originally tried to give the second stage of the rocket the ability to land just like the boosters. However, there are a variety of problems in actually doing this. For starters, the second stage is traveling over three times faster than the first stage. And, more importantly, every kilogram of heat shields and landing gear you add onto the second stage is one less kilogram of payload. Thus, SpaceX decided that instead of reducing payload capacity, it would actually just be cheaper to build a new second stage every single launch. Though this likely makes more sense economically, this severely hinders SpaceX turnaround time with boosters. Even if you're able to turn around a booster every 24 hours like Elon Musk envisions, it's gonna be quite difficult for SpaceX to pop out a ready to launch second stage every single day. Similarly, SpaceX will also need a payload every single day for it to actually make sense to launch on such a tight schedule. Right now, there aren't nearly enough commercial customers or Starlink missions to make that a viable operation. So, not only does the actual refurbishment of the booster still take many weeks, but you also have to take into consideration the manufacturing and testing time for all the other parts of the rocket as well. Anyways, moving on from technical challenges, we have logistical challenges. On video, rocket boosters look nice and small and easy to handle. In reality, the Falcon 9 booster is about 50 meters tall or more than 11 stories tall. As a result, transporting the boosters is not easy by any means. First of all, the booster often lands in the Atlantic Ocean 680 kilometers away from the coast. Transporting this back to land itself takes upwards of a week. Considering the fuel requirements of Crew Dragon missions, GTO launches, and Starlink missions, all of the boosters of these missions have to land in the ocean. So, SpaceX can't try a 24-hour turnaround with any of their most frequent missions. 
Anyways, after the giant is logged back to land, it is laid horizontally on a massive 44-wheel trailer to transport it to the refurbishment facility. On the bright side, SpaceX doesn't have to transport the booster all the way back to Hawthorne, California or McGregor, Texas, as they have to do when manufacturing and launching a booster for the first time. So, those are the most significant obstacles when trying to reduce the time between reusing boosters. But there are also several miscellaneous obstacles as well. For each launch, SpaceX needs to get a license from the FCC. FAA licenses last a long time and cover all the launches that take place within that time frame. But FCC licenses have to be obtained every single launch. As we all know, dealing with the government is not a fast process by any means. And for some reason, obtaining a simple license from the FCC often takes weeks. Something else to consider is that rocket launches are quite violent. So the original launch pad is often slightly damaged and this requires a couple of days of inspection and repair. Even if all of this is completed swiftly, there's still one uncontrollable factor, which is weather. The temperature has to be above 40 degrees Fahrenheit, the wind can't be too fast, there can't be any lightning, and so on and so forth. Over the past couple of years, SpaceX has been trying their best to improve the speed and efficiency of each of these steps. For instance, processing boosters arriving at the port used to take a couple of days itself. Recently though, SpaceX has been able to cut this down to about one day. But we're still a very long way from cutting down the entire process to just one day. At the end of the day, there are dozens of moving parts which make a quick turnaround time difficult. And the truth is, consistent 24-hour turnarounds are likely over a decade away. Here's the thing, SpaceX can design their rockets to be as reusably friendly as possible. But many of the factors required for a fast turnaround are out of their hands. Now, this isn't to say that it'll take SpaceX another decade to reach a 24-hour turnaround time. It's very possible that even within the next few years, SpaceX attempts to complete a 24-hour turnaround and succeeds. But at that point, this feat will still not yet be a reliable and consistent event. In other words, SpaceX likely had to pull a lot of strings to make this happen. They probably launched an extremely light payload on their first launch so that they can have the booster land back at the launch site as opposed to a drone ship. Similarly, they would likely skip several tests and inspections which they would never skip during a crewed mission. Thus, the first time SpaceX succeeds in this feat, it will likely be more of a stunt as opposed to something SpaceX will employ on a regular basis. Something else to keep in mind is that there is literally no practical reason for SpaceX to even do this at this point in time. SpaceX has several Falcon 9 boosters, so even if they wanted to launch every single day, they only need to bring down the turnaround time to just one or two weeks to make this possible. Considering this, the Falcon 9 is very unlikely to evolve into a daily launcher. As Starship develops into a full-scale rocket though, many of these issues may be eliminated. Starship is only a one-stage rocket and is fully reusable, so we won't have to deal with manufacturing new parts between each launch. Also, it is expected that Starship will mostly be launching from and landing on drone ships in the ocean. So that should significantly reduce logistical issues as well as range violations. Moreover, there's not very many people living on the ocean. So SpaceX will likely have to meet less FAA guidelines when launching from the ocean as opposed to launching from land. Starship does pose other challenges though. If Starship doesn't return to land between launches, SpaceX will have to figure out how to inspect and repair if needed at sea. SpaceX will also have to figure out how to refill Starship regularly at sea. I'm sure the crazy people at SpaceX have already thought of all of this and have a plan. So I'm hopeful that we do eventually get rapid and maybe even instant reusability. But at this point, this is still likely a decade if not decades out. What do you guys think is the most significant challenge in reusing a booster? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you guys thought this video explained the various challenges well. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari and I'll see you guys on the next one.